Hello guys, welcome back to this channel and thanks for viewing this video. Today we are going to talk about a checkbox menu item. Um, I'm going to show you how to create it and uh, place it on the menu bar. So if you want to know what a checkbox menu item is, um, by definition it represents a checkbox that can be included on a menu. So a checkbox menu item can have a text or a graphic icon, or it can be an association of both text and icon. So this uh, checkbox menu item can be selected or deselected, and uh, we can also configure it or control it by using actions. So without delay, we are going to create a checkbox menu item. Uh, I'm going to use an example in this video, and I will show you how you can actually use that checkbox menu item. So before we create the checkbox menu item, let us first of all add some few GUI components. So the first one will be a menu bar. So I'll say J menu bar. I call it menu bar, new J menu bar. I need to import the menu bar. Yes, so that's okay. After the menu bar, we need to declare a menu. So we say J menu, I'll say file, new J menu. And in here, I'll set text file, import the J menu class. So now with this menu, we want to set some key keyboard shortcuts for the menu, All right? So if you want to set the keyboard shortcut for your menu, you use the set mnemonic method. So I will say file that set name mnemonic and inside I will write the key event. So key event that VK underscore F. So here it means that if you type the character F on your keyboard, it normally it's supposed to open the menu file. All right. So this is actually how you add a keyboard shortcut to a particular menu. So now what we're going to do is that we're going to add this menu to our menu bar. So I'll say menu bar that add in the brackets file, then semicolon. So the next thing I want to add is going to be a menu item. So I'm going to say J menu item. So this I'm going to call it new file and I'll say new J menu item. So inside the brackets, I'll pass the text of this um, menu item. So that will be new file. And I can also pass the sh keyboard shortcut. So that will be key event that VK underscore N, then semicolon. Now I need to import the J menu item class. And you know what I'm going to do here is that I will add this particular menu item to my menu. So that will be file that add new file, then semicolon. So after we have done that, now we need to create our checkbox menu item. I will come down here. So I will need to use the class J checkbox menu item. So I'll call it check underscore menu item. Then new J checkbox menu item. So I need to set the text of this particular checkbox menu item. I'll call, I'll say checkbox menu item. Now let me import the J checkbox menu item like this. There's a typo here, so I need to say H. Yeah, so for this checkbox menu item, I also need to actually set the keyboard combination. So let me come down here and copy and paste. I'll say check underscore menu item that set mnemonic. Then I'll say key event that V A V K. Um, I'll say C, okay, for checkbox because it's starting with the letter C. Now I need to add this checkbox menu item to the menu. So file that add, I'll say check underscore menu item, then semicolon. So now if we want to show our menu and menu bar to uh, on the frame, we we'll need to add or set the J menu bar to the frame. So that's how you set your J menu bar. It is that set J menu bar and inside brackets, I will pass in my menu bar instance. 
like that. Okay, now let's try to run this program and see. So there we have our frame. We have a menu bar. We have our menu file here. And you can see that the letter F is underlined because that letter F is used as the key for opening this particular menu. If I Okay, if I click on file, now you can see new file, and then you have our checkbox menu item. So when you select checkbox, open it, it's selected, you deselect, now it's deselected. Let me just uh, reduce the size of my frame here, since we are having only one menu. So now this is it. You can add a checkbox to your menu. And you can see that here, letter N is also underlined for new file. And down here, the letter C is underlined for checkbox menu item, because as you could see in my code here, I'm using those characters as key combinations that we can use to open these menu and menu items. So now let's apply an action listener that would allow us to actually change the text of our checkbox menu item here. Like if we select it, we need to have a different value from if we deselect that uh, checkbox menu item. In order for us to do that, we need to actually add an action listener. And uh, this time around, we will create the action listener inside the, um, the constructor. So you know what we're gonna do. We will first add the action listener to our checkbox menu item because that's going to be the menu item on which we will click and then be able to define an action event that needs to happen. All right, so down here, I will say check underscore menu item that add action listener. And here I can say this. Okay, I'm having an error because the action listener has not yet been implemented. Okay, so we need to come up here and say implement action listener. Okay, so this is what we usually do to implement the action listener. But there's another way we can actually do that. Instead of implementing it on a class, we will actually create an instance of the action listener class in our constructor. So for now, let's comment this line of code and come down here. We will say action listener that we will call action listener, new action listener. Okay, and then we'll open and close the curly braces. Then we will say semicolon like this. Let's import the action listener class. So once this is imported, yeah, we can see add an implemented method. I'll click here. Now we'll have our action performed method in here. So this is an action listener instance that we will pass in this line of code here. So instead of saying this, we will say we want to pass action listener. Okay, this action listener instance, we will pass it here so that our checkbox menu item will now listen to the action performed right here. All right, so now as for the action performed, let me change the name of the action event and come in our action performed method. I'm going to create an abstract button. So I'll say abstract button, so a PTN. And so this is going to be an abstract button. It's going to pass it into an abstract button. And I'll say evt that get source. All right, so let me import the abstract button. So the, the abstract button here is going to get the source of the event. All right, so we know the source of the event here is the checkbox menu item because we have added the action listener on this uh, checkbox menu item. And now we will say we will declare another variable that will be of type boolean we we'll say selected and with this variable it's going to store either true or false based on whether the checkbox menu item is selected or not so now we will say a btn so that's the abstract button get model that is selected okay so this abstract button is actually going to replace the checkbox menu item or the checkbox menu item is going to be considered as an abstract button so that's basically what we are saying here okay action performed so when you click on the checkbox menu item we need to consider that checkbox menu item as an abstract pattern. And here we are saying, okay, we will create a Boolean variable that will store the value of either the checkbox menu item is selected or not. So we will need to add another variable that will say str. 
Yes, yeah, so this is going to be a string. So this string, we will use it to set the text of the abstract button, okay, or the text of our checkbox menu item. And as I told you at the beginning, what we want to do is that if the checkbox is selected, we want to output a different text for our checkbox menu item. If it is deselected, we want to output a different text as well. So we will say if selected, then open the curly braces, the str, we will say that str is check um, box menu item selected so that's it and else so that means that if it is not selected or deselected then we need to update the value stored in the str like this so we say deselected now after we have done that we will simply say abtn that set text and we will pass str the value the updated value of all right so you need to keep this in mind. What we are doing in this action performed method here is that whenever we click on our checkbox menu item, our program is going to consider it as an abstract button. Okay, so what, that's what we see in event that gets source uh, and it's going to be considered as an abstract button. Here, what we're doing is that if this abstract button uh, slash checkbox menu item is selected, we want to store that value in this variable called selected. If it is deselected, we will also save it here. So if it is selected, it will store the value true because this is a Boolean. If it is deselected, it will store the value false. So here it's going to store the value true if the checkbox menu item slash abstract button is selected. And then here is the string. This string is what we are updating here. And we will use that to set the text of the abstract button slash checkbox menu item. And here in our if statement, all we are saying that if the checkbox menu item is selected, then we need to update the value of str and set it as text of the abstract button slash checkbox menu item. Or else if it is not selected, that means deselected, set the text of our checkbox menu item to this updated str text. So now let's run, click on file. When you select, now you see checkbox menu item selected. If I deselect it, now checkbox menu item deselected. If I select again, checkbox menu item selected, deselect, checkbox menu item deselected. So guys, that was it on how you can use J checkbox menu item to create a checkbox menu item and add it to your menu or your menu bar and uh, control it using some action listener as we have done here with this example where you can select the checkbox and then change the text of that particular text box uh, using an action listener. So I hope this video was informative and uh, thanks for viewing. I hope. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to this YouTube channel for more videos like this one. Let's meet in the next one.